I want us to open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 11. And I want to welcome you all. I, I, have, I, I, I have a young man here that I, I, I got to know only yesterday. Gabriel, can you stand up? Let, that, let me introduce you to the church. Amen. Gabriel, amen. He came all the way from Ukraine. Yeah. And you know what is happening in Ukraine? Yeah. So the Lord, through that, I was telling him last night when I met him that God works all things together for good. Maybe here is where God wants to bless you. So we, we thank the Lord for his presence here. We thank the Lord for the government and what he's doing for the people who are in trouble. And what we need to do as a church is continue to pray for that nation. What God wills to do, it will happen. But we need to pray. Glory be to God. So when we finish service, we can talk to him, encourage him. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Matthew chapter 11. And I want us to find from 11 to 12. 12 is my focus this morning. And I'll be, we'll go into the scriptures because everything that, most of the things I'm going to say to you, we will, I'll take you to scripture to explain to you why it is important to pay attention to those things. And my plan was actually to put some of my key points up there. I wasn't able to do it. And uh, forgive me. So if you want to take note, I'll repeat what I, I say so that you can take note. And hopefully by the grace of God, now that we have both projectors working, you see it up there, some of the key things that I want you to pay attention to when I'm preaching, so you can take note in your notebook or on your iPad or your Android device. Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Than he. My emphasis is on verse 12. But I just want to stand here and tell you something before we pray. That Jesus see you, sees you who is a born again believer as greater than John the Baptist. From this statement here by our Lord Jesus, he said that no one until John the Baptist's time is greater than John the Baptist. But for those of us who are privileged to be part of the kingdom, we are greater than John the Baptist. In other words, what Jesus was saying was that John the Baptist is greater than Abraham, greater than Moses, than Noah, and all the prophets that you know, you've seen in scripture. John the Baptist was greater than them. But then he says that you and I who are Part of his kingdom. We are greater than John the Baptist. In other words, you are greater than Moses. You are greater than Abraham. You are greater than all the prophets of old. Whom the Lord used mightily. That when you read in scripture, you begin to wonder, wow. How I wish that God can use me in such a powerful way. And here... Jesus is saying that you are greater than them. Therefore, God can even use you much more than he used Moses. Much more than he used Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, David. Do you understand who, how powerful and how great you are? You need somebody to announce to you that you are not as weak as the enemy is whispering into your ears. As you are. That you, you, you are not as, power, as powerless as he says you are. You are powerful. Amen. You are great. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then he said, the reason why that you feel that you are powerless, that you are not powerful, is because you have been lying down dormant. You have not been exercising that power that is in you. That's my main emphasis today. So in verse 12, he said, And from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And now, 
the thing that belongs to you, the blessing, the heritage that belongs to you, you have to possess them by force. Amen. You have to possess them yes. by force. Amen. It is not that kind of, uh, 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 what do you call it, trip or journey whereby you're going to lie down and then you open your mouth and then some honey and milk will be poured into your mouth. No, 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 no. That is not that kind of, the, the, the kind of call that has been called upon, God has called us, it's not that kind of call. Because there is a pressure that is pushing to begin to possess your possession. I said there is a pressure outside. There is an entity outside that wants to dominate you. Let's pray before I get too, 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 too overcome by myself. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. I pray that Lord, the word that you place upon my mouth will be a word that will edify your people as it had edified me. That at the end of this teaching, at the end of this preaching, that all glory shall belong to you and shall be given to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You see, the reason why you cannot push a balloon, an inflated balloon, under water, no matter how big, how massive it is, is what is inside that balloon. It doesn't matter if it's the ocean. If you throw a balloon, an inflated balloon in the ocean, it's going to float. But there's something inside that balloon that says that you cannot stay down. You cannot remain suppressed. And one thing I've realized is that the more the pressure you put on a balloon to push it under the water, the faster and the much more powerful it comes up. Have you noticed that? It is, it is not the pressure that was placed upon it. It is the pressure and the power within the balloon that causes it to come up. Amen. 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 Write this thing down. The beauty of your destiny. The beauty of your destiny only responds to the force of pressure. Nothing significant can be achieved in this life without force or pressure. Amen. Nothing significant happens in the kingdom without the force of violence. In a week's time, you're going to celebrate violence. Hello? We're going to celebrate what? Violence. That was meted out to Jesus. And as a result of that violence that he endured, that he went through, you and I are now called sons and daughters of God. Amen. Nothing significant has taken place in the kingdom without pressure, without force. So if you think that you're going to stroll to your blessing, then I'm here to burst your bubble. It's not going to be that way. You have to go through. Paul, when he was in the prison, he wrote young Timothy. He said, you have to go through pain and suffering. For the calling that is upon you, you need to endure hardship. You need to do what? Endure hardship. And Pastor, what are you saying? Are you saying that so in this life that we go through pain and suffering all the time? No. No. God is good. God blesses us. He makes a way for us where there is no way. But I want to you disabuse your mind from the lie of the enemy that you will go through life without facing some difficult, difficult times. So that you prepare your heart that in spite of what I face, I'm still going to rejoice. I'm still going to bless the Lord. Amen. Nothing significant takes place in the kingdom without a force of violence. Amen. Write this and down. Until, now, let me stop here and say this. If Daddy Brian will have the microphone, he will say, ah, Pastor, I heard you say this yesterday. If you were paying attention or you were trying to get in, Fan Fan is not here. I, I, I told exactly what I'm telling you to the men on Saturday. So those of you who have not been attending, you are missing out. And normally, 
what I do is that I don't repeat things that I have called a meeting for that I'm expecting you to be there. I don't go through the whole teach. I may save one or two here or there. But the Lord impressed upon my heart that to tell my people on this Palm Sunday what you told the men yesterday. Amen. Glory be to God. So when we call a meeting, please do attend. Because some of you are missing out on some sort of, some, some, some breakthrough, some, some, some key things that you, you will need to go through life, to power through situations that you face. That because you were not there, you did not receive that insight. You did not receive that, 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 yeah, that insight to be able to overcome whatever will come against you. Amen. I just thought I would stop here and, and, and tell you that. So number two, write this thing down. Until you resist or apply pressure, you remain a victim of the conflict of life. Until you begin to shake certain things, you will be a victim. You will be a victim. The Bible says, in James chapter 4, go to James chapter 4 verse 7 for me. James chapter 4 verse 7. And there's a B part is what I want to focus on. So let's read the A part, but the B part is what I want you to pay attention to. He said, therefore submit to God. Then what do you do? Resist the devil. So the enemy of your soul, you have to resist him. Resist his attack. And he'll do what? He will flee away from you. So some of you, you want Satan to run away from you, but you don't want to resist. You don't want to resist him. My next point to make it clear to you. Amen. You have to stand up and say, no. No more. I draw a line here. No more. You can't cross this boundary anymore. I'm telling you. Because if he got to your grandfather, great-grandfather, and he got to your grandfather, you go to your father and now it's your turn and you don't open your mouth and shout out to God and begin to begin to declare certain things. He is coming for you. I said, he is coming for you. You have to open your mouth. Because God has ordained power in your tongue. I say it again. God has ordained power in your mouth. Unless you cry out, you will not get your deliverance. The Bible said that the children of Israel, there was a prophecy spoken over their life. That for 400 years, Satan will have his way in your life. You go into a land that is not of your own and you'll be put, you, you increase. You'll be blessed. But then there will be affliction. But after 400 years, I have ordained to come and rescue, rescue you. 400 years came and they were still silent. They were enduring. They, mm, 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 they, they were not talking. Until they opened their mouth and cried out to God, God did not come and say, I've come to rescue you. The Bible said when they open their mouth, see, whether you like it or not, you are going to cry out. Hello? I said, whether you like it or not, you are going to cry out. But the sooner you do, the sooner your deliverance will come. The earlier you do, the earlier your deliverance will begin. So you have to open your mouth. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I have learned a lot of things that pass off from man. So, I'm telling you, the earlier you do, there are some things you are there and you are seeing some things happening in your family, and then you are keeping your mm -hmm, you call meeting. You know, I don't come to meeting. I won't pray. I won't read my Bible. I won't do nothing. He will come for you. He said, resist. How do you resist? You resist by opening your mouth and declaring the thing that God has put in you. Hallelujah. Remember I said the balloon is only able to float not because necessarily of the outside pressure. Because the outside pressure will come. But it's what is within the balloon that will cause it to come up. Hallelujah. So whatever is inside of you must come out. I remember my brother here me, 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 me. He's my son. He's my son. Anyway. Amen. Because he's young. I didn't know that. <laughs> Amen. Now. The Ukrainians, they were saying, Russia is coming to attack you. Oh, Russia will not attack us. He's coming. They are coming. 
I remember one of the news, they said that the, 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 the army or the soldiers, they were not allowed to sleep. They were sleeping under their trucks. They were sleeping around. They were not sleeping in tents. And those who, are, who, who, who know how warfare is done, those commanders say, listen, you don't put your troops through that kind of condition without having an intention to go and attack. So we make life more difficult for you. We we'll let you relax and go to the barracks and sleep. No, no, no. We put you in an in, in unfavorable situation because you are about to face war. You are about to face fire. So they are coming to attack you. So no, no, no. They can't. Russia can't attack. Guess what? They came. And they brought destruction. But as I was thinking about it, I'll go to my next point very soon. As I was thinking about it, I, 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 my, my mind cast back to 2014. Hear me now, church. They arose and they took Crimea and nobody said anything. They arose and they took Donetsk. And that had to call how, how Donetsk. And nobody said anything. So they said, oh, we can take the whole country and nobody can say anything. Yeah, we thank God for the resistance that the Ukrainian army are resisting. But when he, he, the guy began to make noise in 2014, if they had begun to send arms, they began to send things to Ukraine, I'm telling you this wouldn't have happened. And you are sitting there, he's taking this one, he's taking that one, and you're keeping quiet. No, no, no. You have to be very, very, very careful. Because if you take one and you say nothing, you come for another, another one. You come for another one. And things that you thought Satan cannot touch, he will touch. Because you are not resisting. He sees you as, oh, this is easy, easy peasy. I'll come and go in and take whatever I want, and she will not cry out. The devil is a liar. Next point. Whatever has been ruling before does not give up on its own easily. Amen. Whatever has been ruling in your family, in your culture, in your village, in your community, in your house, it does not give up easily. Go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Verse 8 to 10. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying, church? For, in fact, let me give you the background to this story. Jesus went to a place called Gadarene. And when he reached there, he, the Bible said he saw a man who was living in the tombs. A madman. And they put him to chains and he breaks the chains. And now he's living in the cemetery. I mean, I mean, isn't there any good place for you to live than to live among the dead? Until Christ comes, we may go down, but why do you want to get ahead of yourself and go there? But that's where he was living. He couldn't live among the living because of the, the many afflictions, the, the many demonic spirit that was inside of him. So the moment Jesus approached and the demonic spirit saw him, so Jesus of Nazareth, our time hasn't come. Why are, you, why are you here? Don't cast us out. Now listen to what that spirit said. For he said to him, come out of the man unclean spirits. Then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Also he begged him earnestly. Those, those of you who are, who are English, English students. Endless, that means endless with, with everything that is within that demon. Oh, please don't send us away from this country. He begged him, go back. He begged him endlessly that he would not send him, would not send them out of the country. Why? Why wouldn't, why were they begging, don't send us out of the country? Because in this ninth year, nobody's resisting us. Don't send us out. Cast us out of this man, but don't cast us out of this country because this is a fertile place. A place where nobody is opening their mouth. A place where nobody is praying. A place where nobody is resisting. So why do you want me to get out of this country? Whatever have you ruling will never give up unless you apply pressure. Scripture said that when a man is, when the demons are cast out of a man, they go seeking dry places. Places that are dry, places that the Holy Spirit is not there. Dry places means a place that the Holy Spirit is not moving. 
where there's no water. Remember that the Bible said the Holy Spirit is out. His Spirit is like a water. Yeah. Slow down, Pastor Anthony. His Spirit is like water. So he, he goes looking for places where there's no movement of the Spirit, where it is dry, where there's no water moving. And the Bible said, Jesus was telling this, so if Jesus is saying it, you have to pay attention. I'm not saying don't pay attention to Peter, Paul, and the other disciples, but pay attention to the master because he knows what he's talking about. He said, and finding no rest, he comes back to the country, comes back to the man, comes back to the woman, and check it out. Some of you Satan is checking you out. We don't know. He's checking you out. Is there still room for me to, uh, to come in? Is there, is, is there still a place for me to occupy? He comes to check out if that place is dry. If that place is unoccupied. Then, he said, wait a minute now. He was able to get me out when I was alone. So now, I'm not coming in now. I'm going to bring seven more of my people and we come to what? Come and stay. So the situation that you were in becomes worse now. In the name of Jesus, everyone that the enemy is checking out, today by the power of the Holy Spirit, I command you to be filled. You will be filled in the name of Jesus. No more emptiness. No more dryness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever has been ruling before does not give up on its own easily. Glory be to God. Write this thing down. Whatever is hidden will only be revealed when you open your mouth. Whatever is hidden in your life will not be revealed without you crying out. Without you opening your mouth. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 3. Jeremiah 33. Are, are you getting something today? Yes, See, we need to shake ourselves from that, 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 that sleep. Yes. That sleep that we are in. Amen. Say, wake up, oh sleeper. Amen. Wake up. Amen. So, Pastor, why are you loud today? No, I'm not that loud. You know that. But this is very close to my heart. No more. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He said, but Jeremiah 33, verse, not 23, please. 33. Are you trying to confuse me now, uh, uh, Tommy? <laughs> Praise. He said what? Call unto me. Call unto me. And I will answer you. And then I will do what? I will show you things that are great and mighty which you do not know. I will show you things that you do not know. Unless you open your mouth, you live in darkness. Unless you open your mouth and cry out and begin to make some declaration, things that you are supposed to see, things that are supposed to, 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 to expose themselves or not. There's a scripture in Psalm number 18. Psalm number 18, 44 to 45. He said, when they heard of you, they will come out. When they hear of you, they will come out. What the enemy wants you to do is to keep your mouth shut. And not to talk. And not to begin to declare things that God has ordained in your mouth. Glory be to God. Amen. Write this in down number five. Difficult situations and tough times will bow to the fervency and seriousness of your prayers and confession. Now, the reason why I'm standing here teaching this is that after I have prayed, I don't know about those who attended, after I prayed this kind of prayer that you know, I, I, I'm going to lead you to pray today, I felt good. I had never felt good for a long time. I'm telling you, I'll come here, I'll teach 
but I'll go home and then there's some sort of lingering grief and sorrow going on. I said, Lord, when am I going to be free? So, yesterday's prayer meeting was, for me, it was, it was good for me. It helped me. I don't know about those who attended, but it helped me. That's why I'm here telling you that I want you also to be helped. Because after I have declared some things, after I have spoken in tongues, after I have made some declaration, I felt good about myself. So I have never felt good like this for a long, long time. Because I opened my mouth. Because I declared the things. I made some confessions. Am I making sense to somebody here? Hallelujah. They will hear of you and they will come out. Difficult situations, bad situations, they will not bow except to your, the fervency and the seriousness of your prayers and confession. Amen. Amen. Not just making some uh, 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 mindless confessions, but confessions that are biblical, that are based upon the word of God. Let me wrap up with this before we pray. Luke chapter 18. This is from verse 1, Tommy. This is what Jesus said. He said, this is the reason why men and women have to persevere in prayer. He said, he began by, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose that. Men always have to make confessions and not lose that. Why did Jesus say that? Before we go, there, don't go to the next verse yet. Why did Jesus say that? Because there are times that when you, you, you make your confessions, you make your prayer that the enemy will come and say to you that, oh, nothing is happening. Because he wants you to stop speaking. Yes. He wants you to stop speaking. Somebody said, I had many, many years ago, I think, to a Kenny Hagen. He said that when a talking man meets a talking God, something must happen. He said again, when a speaking man meets a speaking God, something has to happen. And the enemy wants you to keep your mouth shut and not talk. Most of you here, you know that when you were babies and you didn't know what to say, whenever you are hot, whenever you are, you are hungry, or when you are wet, you, would, you cry out. Yes, amen. Amen. You cry out. Babies cry out. Why? Because they need mommy's attention. If the baby keeps his mouth shut and they lie in that wet thing, it will begin to get soft. It will go hungry and die. But the moment... It feels the hunger pain, pangs. It began to cry. Out. It will not stop until its needs is attended to. And now you are grown up and you are saying that same principle doesn't work for you. She says, oh, keep your mouth shut. Don't say nothing. Let things be as it is. Let things be as it may be. Who told you? Your voice can change situations. The word that comes from your mouth, from your lips, is able to transform situations. It will turn the tide that was against you for you. Hallelujah. But keep your mouth shut. Don't talk. Don't talk. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, you make too much noise in this house. The devil is alive. Open your mouth and shout. Talk. Hallelujah. Go on. Saying there was a certain, a certain city. There was in a certain city a judge. Who did not fear God, nor regard me. See, this is, this is, oh, yeah. listen. So it doesn't matter the temperament, the yeah. belief system yeah. of that person. Yeah. Yeah. See, what Jesus is saying that what you are going to do, yeah. it does not matter whether the person believes what you are doing or not. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying now? It doesn't matter whether the person is a believer or not. Yes. See, oh, no, I mean, will, will this thing work? These people, they don't believe in God. Oh. These people, they don't, know, they, they don't go to church and therefore I only pray when I'm dealing with people who go to church. They're is a liar. Whether they believe or not, your job is to open your mouth and pray. He said, this man fear man, fear, do not fear man, neither does he fear God. But that man was made to move. Some things will move in your life in the mighty name of Jesus as you open your mouth and confess and declare things. You see, let me tell you something now. It is very, very now, 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 listen to me now. Now, as I, as I preach, I pay my attention to what the Holy Spirit is telling me. Sometimes he draws some things in my, in my spirit. But when you are speaking and you are talking and you are so much engaged, very little are you able to hear from outside. Hmm. Very little are you able to what? To hear from outside. Because you are so engaged. 
Satan wants you to keep your mouth shut so he can continue to whisper into your ears. But the moment you begin to make some declarations, some confession, begin to cry out to God and focus on God, whatever he says is like water on the, on, 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 on the rock. It doesn't affect you. I'm telling you now. Hallelujah. I'm preaching now. This is not Bible study, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. No, 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 please. Not now. Not now. Don't take my mind off what I'm doing. Amen. Let's go on. He said, now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice for my adversary. Get justice. Yes. Yes. Get, I need a breakthrough. Yes. There are some things working in my life. There are some things that come like, I need breakthrough. Amen. And the Bible said for a season. See, some of you, you haven't come to the end of that season yet. So you think that nothing can happen to, be, 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 for, be, be, as a result of your prayer. There's a season. Solomon said there's a time and a season for everything under the heaven. So you got to open your mouth in the season that you need to open your mouth. Scripture said that when the heavens get heavy, the clouds get heavy, what happens? They fall. Oh, come on, somebody. When the clouds get heavy, the the, the thing that can happen is that rain will fall. So keep on speaking. Keep on filling the crowd, clouds. Keep on filling the clouds. Because a time is coming when your raining day is going to come. Hallelujah. Things are going to fall. But he, that, he wants you to quit in the middle of the season. He wants you to quit in the middle of the season. So that you pray intermittently. You do something that you quit. I've been doing everything. That, how many times did you pray concerning that situation? How many times did you keep, kept on going? Somebody said that for you to say that something doesn't work, you have to do it 30 times. Or they said, oh, oh, I think you have to say 300 times or so. Before you can confidently say that this thing doesn't work. But many people, they tried once. What, how many times do you try? I tried only once or twice. And nothing happened, therefore you left. I've told you this story before. Years ago, I did tell you that there was a guy who prayed that the water in their community would flow. Because for a long time, there was no water. But one day, when he prayed, something happened. The guy who was supposed to face the problem got a revelation. Went to the, uh, the, to the reservoir and began to work. And he turned on the taps. This guy got up in the morning and said, today is the last day. If I go and there's no water, no more, I'm not going there again. Hey! But when he got up this morning, that engineer also got up. When he picked up his bucket, the engineer picked up his tools. And he began to walk to the place that the, the, the tap was. The guy also began to travel to the station. The guy reached there, faced the problem, turned off the tap. But the water needed to move from where it was to where he is. He stood there and said, I'm giving you 30 minutes. If after 30 minutes nothing happened, I'm going. I'm going. No more. No more. I, I prayed enough. After 30 minutes nothing happened. I said, no, this thing doesn't work. Let me go and walk 10 miles to do what I was doing. Suffer for nothing. The moment he turned around and went home, the taps began to flow. Water began to flow. Water began to flow. And the one who did not do nothing, who did not fear God, when hey, water! <laughs> they began to take water. Some of you, the people of this world are benefiting from your prayers. Because you did not tarry. Because you did not tarry in prayer. Because you did not stay long. The Bible said for a season, that judge didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. And he will not for a while. But after what he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man, have no respect for man, but this woman is going to kill me. This one is going to kill me. If I don't do something for her, she's going to wear me out. I declare to you, the enemy of your soul is getting wearied. Keep on pushing. Keep on declaring. Keep on confessing. 
I declare to you in the name of Jesus, your breakthroughs around the corner. Your breakthroughs around the corner. In the mighty name of Jesus, keep on pushing, keep on working on it. That woman will wear me down, he says, if I don't give her justice. Then Jesus says something that we stop, we don't even pay much attention to. He said, but the God that you are praying to, he is not that, like that man. How wouldn't God, yes. your Father in heaven, yes. give you justice and soon, yes. if you keep on crying to him, Day and night. Put the rest of the scripture there. I've just said it. Amen. Day and night. Day and night. Oh, come on, somebody. Day and night. Day and night. Night and day. Let incense arise. You just you don't understand that word. You don't understand it. The incense, according to the book of Revelation, are the prayers of the saints. Glory be to God. It must flow day and night. Day and night, night and day, day and night, night and day, day and night, night and day. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for your When you stop praying and confessing God's word because of any situation, your situation begins to dominate you. I refuse to be dominated by my situation. I refuse to be dominated. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Please come. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray. I say we're going to pray. And after that, you're going to give. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to you. I want you to stand up if you can. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your son's knees. Father, I pray for healing. I pray for restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. I command every inflammation in your foot, in your leg to begin to go down. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray for strength, divine strength. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Listen, I was telling Veronica just this morning. And I think those of you who have been coming here for Bible study, you could say I was in pain about a few weeks back. And nobody could approach me because when I said, Pastor, what are you going to do? People don't come unless they are very close to you. I changed a few things, of course, in my life. I went to pray. No, I, I couldn't lift my hand. This thing, this. I could not. So I want the GP, he gave me some anti-inflammatory. I'm not against medicine. Hello? I said, I'm not against medicine. You know me. But I said, this pain, I don't think that it is anti-inflammatory solution. Listen to me. I'm not saying that I'm giving you medicine. Take it. Okay, take it. The father you take me, I don't mean that you don't believe God. Do you understand what I'm saying? But for me, I began to pray. Change some things in my life, I began to pray. I didn't go for the anti inflammatory. Now I can do this. I could not lift my hand. When I'm going down on my knees, I was wincing. So I thought it was old age. But people see me and say, But you look like I see you are, you are in your 30s. But I didn't feel like 30. <laughs> I didn't feel like 30. I felt all my 50 plus years. There was a switch. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I began to pray. I began to do what he showed me to do. And now I'm pain free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say it works if you pay attention to him. Pay attention to him. We're going to pray. The first thing that we're going to pray against is fear. But one thing I've understood is that fear is a bit sense. He put fear in you. So, oh, I have this pain in my back. I heard somebody give a this and that. No, my, my son or whatever had this pain and then the next day they were crippled. Am I going to be crippled? He began to use your own imagination against you. An imagination that's supposed to imagine good and wonderful things. He will begin to sabotage your imag imagination. There is of you thinking good things about you, about your family, about your church, about your situation. Begin to think negative. The devil is alive. So say this after me. Say in the name of Jesus. Today, according to the word of God, I was not given the spirit of fear. But I was given power sound mind. Therefore, I declare this day that I refuse
refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. For God did not give me the spirit of fear. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare today, according to the word of God, that whatsoever, whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. Today I declare, I am born of God. Therefore, I am an overcomer. I overcome every situation. I overcome every circumstance that has come against me. I overcome it in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, so I declare the strength of God, the power of God is in me. Therefore, I go from strength to strength. I go from power to power. I go from faith to faith in the mighty name of Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. In the name of Jesus, I'm empowered from within for greater is he. Say, I'm empowered. I'm empowered from within for greater is he that is in me than the one that is in the, in the outside. Say, I declare, I am go I'm going forward. I'm moving forward. I'm getting better. I'm making progress. Every 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 area of my life, every area of my life, I'm making progress. There is no stagnation in me. In the mighty name of Jesus, say there is no limitation in me. I am limitless. I am limitless because that limitless God, that limitless God dwells in me. Say the name of Jesus. Every stone thrown against me, it has become. A stepping stone to my glory. It has become a stepping stone to my deliverance. It has become a stepping stone to my blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, my portion in this world has fallen in good places. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, lift your voice and bless the Lord. Father, we thank you. Lift your hands and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm covered by the covenant blood of Jesus. Therefore, every covenant, every curse, every altar raised against me is broken. Is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. My imagination is covered by the blood of the Lamb. My imagination is covered by the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, I refuse to imagine bad things. I refuse to imagine evil things. I refuse to imagine things that oppress me. In the name of Jesus, I imagine wonderful things. I imagine blessed things. I imagine progress in the name of Jesus. I declare today by the power of the anointing of God, by the power of the anointing of God, I put down every false imagination. I put down every stronghold that is put up against me in the mighty name of Jesus. Say what I declare in the name of Jesus that every wall of limitation in my life be broken down, be broken down, and every power or altar resisting my place in the destiny of God be, be, be rendered, say be rendered, impotent in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Almighty God, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. Come and lift your hands and praise. 